So hey, Will. Hello. Uh, Andy Hules with uh, Radius AI. I'm head of uh, global growth and strategy. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to meet with you, learn more about Diageo. Diageo is the world's largest alcoholic manufacturing uh, company, and you are their innovation manager, global innovation manager. Tell me a little bit more about yourself and about the company. Sure, yeah, no, lovely to meet you, and it's lovely to be here at these kind of events. So, yeah, I sit inside of Diageo's global breakthrough innovation team, and our role is to build a kind of bridge to the future. And that sounds quite general and vague, but <laughs> basically we have to think about what's the three to five year vision look like for the future of drinks, manufacturing, hospitality, experiential, those various different broad areas. And we test and learn. We go out there, we find interesting new startup technology sectors like voice, and we think about how do we play in that space? How does our brands like Johnny Walker or Guinness or Smirnoff play in these spaces to really explore the next way that consumers want to engage and interact with brands really. And it, this is just a great event to kind of meet interesting companies and see who else is doing what in this space. Yeah, it's been a great day here, learning all about voice and conversational AI. Tell me a little bit about how Diageo leverages conversational AI. Yeah, no, well, I was on the stage today chatting with JP and we were talking about some of the case studies and examples that we've done. And I think the, the space of what this opens up for brands is to have an ongoing relationship really is a great opportunity for us to have a, a two-way street of conversation. It's no longer brand messaging, just splurting out at consumers. It means consumers can have a voice and a relate, or pardon the pun, um, have a voice to be able to have a conversation with the brand and it's a two-way street. So we've been experimenting with different ways that we can use this new medium and way to interact with, con with consumers to be able to experiment with everything from brand home activations where we can transport someone to a Scottish island where you may never be able to go to, all the way through to be able to order a voice, uh, over voice, a sample of a whiskey that you can get delivered to your own home to help discovery. So we're experimenting and looking at where both the education and the entertainment of what voice and conversational AI can really open up for us. Yeah, that's so fascinating. And, and today we learn more about, too, how voice AI opens up accessibility. Mm. So it doesn't matter where you live or what language you speak or, you know, even if you can afford to put fingers on glass or on a keyboard, you have your voice. Yeah. Everybody has a voice and that um, really changes the game. So tell me a little bit more about, you guys are in, um, you're in a, a, a business where like 40% of the purchases in a convenience store are alcohol, right? Mm. And you know, there's a, a lot of, um, you know, age verified, yeah. you know, that we have to worry about. And we also have to worry about, you know, which products should go in each store, yeah. right? So how do you how do you use AI? How do you leverage, um, into, you know, yeah, it's AI a, for It's that. an interesting area about, like, kind of retail and, and, and when you're at that shelf edge, being able to influence that decision where someone is sitting and inundated with a whole wall of liquid in bottles and being able to go, okay, what's the right thing for me? And how do I navigate that? And we do it in a couple of different ways, both from a visual merchandising standpoint, we've got a few tools that we can be able to, because we don't have any retail stores ourselves, we are sold through everyone from uh, big kind of uh, Walmarts or Asdas of this world, to Tesco's, to various different manner, um, right. retailers, and we need to think about how does our product show up on shelf? How can we optimize and make sure that our product stands out against all the other ones that are out there? So we've been using a lot of visual learning and a lot of visual merchandising to be more informed with the way that we present and do point of sale. But we're also trying to help consumers navigate it. And we built a thing, and we were talking a little bit about it today, is where Diageo made its first tech acquisition last year, or 2022, where we bought a, a, a AI company, a, um, which is a flavor print AI company, where uh, it's called Watch Your Whiskey, or well, the company was called Vanda. And what it lets you do is you answer 11 food-based questions when you're in an aisle on a website, and it lets you kind of swipe through, do you like this type of food? Do you like that type of food? It then builds a specific flavor print for your profile, and it then goes, okay, we can then 90, 70, 80, 90% accurately say, you're gonna like this whiskey. So you can fill it by with confidence, and it's a nice, fun, interactive interface to be able to use the rich data that can be behind these AIs to really benefit the consumer at that point of purchase. That is fascinating. I'm a pescatarian, so I'd love to know which whiskey is ideal for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, interesting. 
So um, tell me a little bit more about you. Mm. Like, what's your background? A fun fact about you. How did you get into this business? Yeah, I know I've been chatting to a lot of people here. People come from so many different backgrounds. And that's what's really great to have these events again in person. And I've been at Diageo for four years now. I previously have been agency side. So I moved client side about four years ago. Um, and my background's in creative technology. And I'm also very uh, openly as a kind of dyslexic. I embrace dyslexia, really? and I think dyslexia is a great superpower for people that think alternatively, that, that can bring new ideas to the table and be able to look at a problem and then flip it on its head and look at that intersection of creativity and technology. But I can speak to the techie people, but I can also then try and think about what's the creative wrapper that we put on these things to really benefit people, not just doing tech for tech's sake. And I think my lateral and uh, alternative thinking as a dyslexic has been great for me in my career to get to where I am today. And there's been lots of other people who've got very similar stories like this, that really people are no longer the kind of single vertical job career progression. It's very open now. People can go in so many different ways to get into passion and, and enthusiasm about what the jobs they do and, and how they do it. That is a fascinating story. I think you're in the ideal role as an innovation manager. Do you have any predictions for 2023? in terms of either technology or where Diageo is going to land? I think it's very, like being at CES, being at these conferences, you get inundated with information, inspiration about what's going on out there, and both from today and also walking the floor. I think we're just starting to see a real shift now from both from a kind of a usability, but also reducing complexity around the smart home. We've all been there, we've all got smart systems now, they've got smart light bulbs, smart TVs, too many things that are too smart sometimes. What we're seeing in a lot of the conversation and that, that's happened over the last couple of days is about simplicity that, for the end user. I don't want to have to have millions of apps to be able to control everything. I, if I know what I want to do, I should be able to have a smart home that comes together. And right? There's a, a lot of hot talk on the show floor today was about uh, matter. Matter is a new language that will go across Amazon, Google, Apple, various different smart home ecosystems to be able to work together as one single benefit for the end consumer. And I think that's going to be a really fascinating space for what that's going to do for voice uh, going forward. You're absolutely right. Building an ecosystem is so important and making artificial intelligence easy and fun is what it's all about. So I'm so delighted to have this time with you. Thank you for sharing with me today. Of course, lovely to meet you. Thank you for having me.